hey guys welcome to my channel my name is larry today i'm going to be taking you through a retouching of this image here so i we transformed the image from here to here and the good thing is also that i i made a lot of free actions available so these three actions are actually free that you can download using the link in the description section and just edit with me i also made available the raw image that i'm editing here if you'd also want to download this and practice with me let's get right straight into the video so to begin with you just have to download the action with using the link that i put in the description menu and i will now teach you how to import the downloaded action here into photoshop so if you can if you do not see the action window here just go to window then here click actions so you can see the action panel loaded here on the right side so just open the folder where you downloaded the action to the name of the action is larry's action from the 4th of february 2021 so this is very easy to do just click on the action and drag it into the action window here so this when you see that now i have larry's action open here and it's easier for me when i work with the button menu so you can just click on the three lines that you have here and just choose the button mode so now you have three free actions so one is for generating frequency separation and the second one is for adding a texture so adding more texture to the image because sometimes after frequency separation you lose a texture and the third action is my automatic contrast so to begin with i'll just click on the my frequency separation to generate the frequency separation actions so once you click it um, you would have to choose a gaussian blur that you would like to use so as i always described in all my videos frequency separation creates two layers one with a color and one with a texture layer there are so many in-depth videos about how the whole frequency separation works if you would want to get more detail just google frequency separation on youtube and you would find this there so here um practically what i normally like to do is i like to work with a lower radius because i still want to see some of the blemishes that i have on this on the model skin so a lot of people sometimes use 20 here but i like to work with lower numbers over here typically from almost all my images which are beauty i work with a radius of 10. so here just put in 10 and click ok here so you can see that you have a, a, um, a group created here which is called my frequency separation and when you open the group you see two layers one is the color layer and the other one is the texture layer so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to select my color layer then choose the lasso tool here and select an area of the skin where i would like to apply my gaussian blur to smoothen out the skin blemishes there so here what is very important is that you choose you make sure that the radius is not zero i can make this an example for you to see if the radius is zero when you select the portion where you want to apply and you press Q on the keyboard which lets you see how the feathering is going to be you see that i have a very sharp edge and this is not going to be good because when you apply the gaussian blur you would see a very sharp transition between the area where you applied and the area where you did not apply so over here i would like to choose a radius of about i can press q to go back Control d then i'll choose typically a radius of about 15 pixels should be fine so when you press 15 just select the area where you want to apply this again so this is i'm starting always most of the time with the forehead then you can press q to see the feathering so you can see that here the transition between the the area of selection and the area that i did not select is is better so i would have a, a gradual transition between the two sections press q again then what i would do is you can go to filter then go to blur then choose gaussian blur so here i'm going to choose a radius where i think i have a, enough smoothening on the model skin so here 10 is too low for me i would go to somewhere around 33 ish seems to be fine so then just click ok then press ctrl d then i would select a different portion of the model skin so here i would work with this section here so what what you should take note of the fact is that here you can see that i have some darker areas and here i have some brighter areas i try as much as possible not to be blurring the darker parts and the brighter parts together because when you do this you lose this contouring of the model skin um, face so here just go to blur if you can if you want to apply the same effect you can just press alt ctrl f as you see here and it will apply the same gaussian blur radius that was applied in the previous part of the forehead so this is fine I can select now this area here and I can also press the same thing ctrl alt f to blur this out then you can press ctrl d to select this out then come here select the next part 
here and you can also just right click here and select Gaussian blur so this also applies the same effect that you applied in the in the previous action then I'll select my the lower part here so when you are doing this yourself you can take more time to with your selection but just for educated purposes I would speed this up a little bit so that you see how this is generally done so this is fine right click then choose blur Control D to deselect. So I think here I'm fine. I'll smooth in this part of her nose a little bit. Right click, then I'll choose play. This is fine. Then I think I'll move to the other model. So here I'll do the same thing. Select the area where I'd want to apply the Gaussian blur. So it's almost the whole part of the forehead. Then here, because it's a new model, I would like to reselect my Gaussian Blair effect. So it could be that 30 would work. It could be that this wouldn't be enough. So I'll just come to Blair, select Gaussian Blair. And here you can see I would like to go a bit more. So 34, 34 is just fine. Click OK. Then Control D to deselect. Then we go to the next part. So I'll select this area here. Then just right click. I can do this again to be sure that my selection is okay. Go to Gaussian Blair and 34 is perfect here as well. Then I'll select the last part of the model's face. Oh, not the last part, but on the other side. Right click and choose Gaussian Blair. So this just applies the same radius that you applied previously to the other selections. So I'll do the same thing here. So this is way easier to use than I mean I really like working with the mixer brush tool but I just want to show that sometimes if you do not have the Wacom tablet it's very difficult to work with the mixer brush tool sorry so this is very easy just clicks then here I would work on this part of the model's um, chest area so I'll select this and I'll come to filter player here I would use 40. I'll smoothen this part a little bit more. Right click, choose Gaussian Blur, Ctrl D. Then also the models, this other model's neck area. I can also smoothen this out a little bit. So come to filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and this is fine. Then I do the same thing to this area as well. Can apply the same Gaussian blade that I applied in the last part here. So right click and choose Gaussian blade. So this is fine. So now I'll press Ctrl D to zoom out, Ctrl Zero to zoom out. Sorry. So this is before and this is after. We've been able to smoothen out the model's skin very very nicely. So the last part that I'll do here, I mean from the from the frequency separation, is to retouch some of this imperfections that I see here. I can just do this with the clone stamp too. You can do this by pressing S on the keyboard and I'll increase the size of the brush to the area where I would like to apply this to. Just, just click, press Alt and click a good area and just paint in. Sorry, um, very important, I made a mistake here. You would have to use the texture layer for the skin blemishes that you would be editing, right? So just make sure you select the texture layer. Then here, very important that you, do, you are not sampling all layers, but you are sampling current layer. Then here, everything remains the same. Just click and paint, click and paint. And click and paint. Click and paint. So I press, I press space and click and drag to move the image easier for me. So just click, paint, click and paint. So I'm not going to take all of this out because um, just for the sake of time, like I already communicated, I'll just take a few out and this should be fine. Like I said, what I would also make available is the raw image that I'm editing here. So you can edit this image with me. And like I said, because I have these actions already generated for you, it makes the whole process very, very easy. So I think this is fine for me. Um, press Control zero. If you have a feeling that you, you went overboard with respect to the frequency separation, just come to the frequency separation folder that you created here, click on the opacity and just reduce the effect. So the higher the opacity, the higher the effect. So you can just, if you think it's too much, you can reduce the opacity. But for what I did, I think this was fine. So I'll work with an opacity of 100. 
Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add what I call an, I call it an auto contrast. So just click on the auto contrast um, action that I was imported here. And what it does is that I can take you through what the action actually does. You create two curve layers, one called multiply and one called screen. I mean, from res with respect to the the, lay the, um, the effect that you apply here. So it's more or less like what we always do with the dodging and burning, but here I do it more automatically. So you, you, after that, I create sort of a, a, um, a mask here. And when you look into the mask, you can see that the the contrast and effect would be applied. So where it's brighter, where you see white, the effect will be more, and where you see dark, the effect will be less. So it just, for me, like a con um, contrast that I apply. So I can take you through what it was looking like before, this is before, and this is after. You can see that if you think you want more, you can just increase the opacity as well. You can take it to 63 or whatever you want. So you can see that it, it puts some pop into the contrast of the image, this is before, and this is after. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is, for instance, sometimes it appears that when you finish a screen separation, you lose some of the texture on the model skin. So also what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some texture to add the texture. Just click on the, so select the most recent layer, then click on add texture. So this is going to generate some texture for me. Here I would typically work with a radius of about 1.2, 1.5. If you need more texture, you can increase the radius, but 1.2 seems to be fine here and here the advantage is that I created this as a smart object so if you think you need more of the texture just double click the high pass here and for instance I'll take this overboard so that you see that you see how it is looking here you have too much of the texture so I made it in such a way that it's an editable um, smart filter so you can always edit the radius so here let's say just for demonstrative purposes I'll use 2.5 2.8.5 so they can see the effect so let's zoom in a bit so that you can see the texture that we added um this was before and this after you can see that we added some sharpening effect to the image as well so here i'll reduce it back to 1.8 this seems to be fine for me 0.8 okay now the last thing that i'm going to do is the color grading so I, I i just wanted to add a different effect to the image and this i did very easy using the gradient map so just come down here, click on the options that you have here and select gradient map. And the gradient map that was selected by default was black and white because on the left side here, I had this white and black already selected. But if you do not have this, this is just this, I can click on this for you to see, this is just a foreground to background effect. And this is um, one of the basics that comes with Photoshop pre-installed. So this is not a, a different um, gradient that you would have to import, this comes automatically. So here, just click OK. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to reduce the opacity. So I'm going to take this to about, about 50, 55 ish. That's fine. And you see that we transform the colors of the image completely. So this is before, this is after, this is before, this is after. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to, I can actually increase more of the contrast that I have here. So I can increase this more to get more contrast in the image. And I'm generally going to boost the brightness of the image by um, using the caps layer. So just come down here, click on caps. I can increase the brightness. What I can also do, just to show you another way to do this, I could also use my levels. Come down here, click levels and drag the, so if you drag the blacks in and the whites out, there's also in, also this gives you more contrast. So I can bring in, so this is the whites or the highlights of the image and this section is the shadows. So as I drag the levels to the left from the highlights, it adds more brightness to the image and I think this is perfect. Thank you very much for watching the video once again. If you have any questions, please feel free to write this in the comment section and I'll take you through. I'll make sure I respond to any comment that is addressed to me. Remember to subscribe to my channel for more videos and hit the thumbs up button if this video was dedicated to you. Thank you very much and have a nice day.